Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anil Kamath. I am a senior consultant surgical oncologist here at Helios Cancer Clinic. So let me take this opportunity to talk about GIST tumors. GIST tumors stand for gastrointestinal stromal tumors. So what are these, how are they caused, what tests are done and how are they treated. Now. GIST, as I said, stands for gastrointestinal stromal tumors. They can arise anywhere in the gastrointestinal tract, right from the esophagus to the stomach to the intestine and to the rectum. Now, they are a little different from the regular type of tumors or adenocarcinomas because they behave a little differently. They are diagnosed differently. So, let me talk a little more about these aspects. They arise from cells within the wall of the um, intestine. These cells are called interstitial cells of Kahal. So, how can they present with? Now, most of them present with the patient having non-specific abdominal symptoms like bloating or not able to take food. Then on evaluation, a mass is found and on evaluation, it is found to be a gist. GIST is also one of the causes to be remembered for gastrointestinal bleeding. So if a patient is having blood in stools, which is not explainable by other causes, then one of the possibilities to be kept in mind is a GIST tumor. Sometimes patients present with a large mass felt per abdomen. A lot of them may be totally silent also. So these are the various ways by which GIST present with. What causes them? There is no straightforward answer to this. For most, we don't have an answer as to what causes a GIST. A few of them are associated with certain genetic syndromes. But by and large, we do not know why these GIST tumors occur. So how are they diagnosed? Now, unlike the regular adenocarcinoma, the GIST tumors tend to be outside the lumen. So rather than inside the lumen, they tend to be outside. So while a regular carcinoma can be diagnosed easily with the endoscopy, GIST tumors are seen as a bulge inside the lumen. And to take biopsies, the endoscopist has to go much deeper or do a well biopsy. Sometimes an endoscopic ultrasound is also required. CT scan or PET scan helps us to stage the disease to see where all it has spread. Apart from this, one important aspect of this tumor is that on pathology, the pathologist initially sees spindle type of cells, a particular shape of cells, but when they do the immunohistochemistry, most of the GIST tumors are positive for a marker called CD117. So this marker is very important for treatment also. Almost all the GIST tumors are CD117 positive. So immunohistochemistry forms an important aspect of the diagnosis of GIST. So while coming to the treatment, we classify the GIST tumors as to where it is located, how big it is and how fast it is multiplying, which is sometimes known by a marker called the KI67. So sometimes a very small asymptomatic tumor with a with low KI67 can be just observed because it may not give any problem. Certain gists are very slow growing. It may take years before they become symptomatic. But when it is a particular size or the KI67 is at a higher level, then the main treatment is surgical, especially when it is localized to one area. Most of the gists happen in the stomach. And here, while in regular carcinomas, we do what is called a radical gastrectomy. We have to remove the entire stomach. In GIST tumors, it is not required. We just have to remove a wedge of the tumor, the part where it is attached to the stomach. We don't have to remove a major portion of the stomach. This operation can be done laparoscopically and sometimes robotically. Intestinal GISTs also may require resection and anastomosis of the tumor. Apart from surgery, the next important treatment is what we call targeted therapy. Like I told earlier, most GIS are CD117 positive. 
Now with research, we have been able to find a molecule which specifically targets these, uh, these markers. These belong to the class of tyrosine kinase inhibitors. There is a drug known as imatinib, which works very well for GIST. And with this tumor, certain tumors which are very large in size or difficult to operate initially can be made operable by giving it initially and when the size reduces. Even when it is metastatic, say the tumor has spread to other areas like liver or lung, the tumor can still be effectively treated with this tablet, imatinib. Apart from imatinib, there are other classes of the same uh, drug like sunitinib and other such drugs. GIS patients tend to do much better than the adenocarcinoma, uh, which is the other subtype. Uh, other type of gastrointestinal tumors. So these are the some a broad overview about what uh, GIST is. It is not a common tumor, but it is uh, important to know about this tumor because every now and then we come across it. Thank you.